been nearly two weeks since the horrifying shootings in Las Vegas, and unbelievably, nobody seems able to answer even the most basic questions about what actually happened. Police initially told us that Stephen Paddock shot a hotel security guard in the hallway outside his room after he'd finished murdering more than 50 people on the plaza below. Then authorities changed that timeline. What actually happened, investigators explained, was that at 9.59 p.m. that night, Paddock shot guard Jesus Campos in the leg after firing about 200 rifle rounds through the hotel room door. Then Paddock waited another six minutes for some reason before opening fire on the crowd. Once that rampage ended, it was another hour before police entered his room and found Paddock dead. That was the explanation as of a few hours ago. Didn't make sense, but they were going with it. Now there's a new account. In a statement just this afternoon, the company that owns the hotel where Paddock was staying says it has concluded that police are all wrong about what happened. Actually, the hotel says armed security officers rushed to Stephen Paddock's room, quote, immediately after the shooting first began. How did they respond when they got there? Why was Paddock able to continue shooting? We still don't know the answers to those questions. But that's just the beginning of what we don't know about this case. Media outlets, for example, confidently reported that Paddock made a living as a professional video poker player. Now, that's technically possible. We checked today with someone in Vegas. But it's a little like, as Ann Coulter pointed out in a column this morning, like claiming someone made a living smoking crack. Probably didn't happen. So what was really going on with Stephen Paddock? Still unknown. And so, by the way, is his motive still unknown? 64-year-old accountants don't typically spend months planning mass murder for no reason. There was a reason. No one could even guess as to what it was. Other questions that Coulter raised that news organizations ought to be asking but aren't? How can it possibly take eight days to figure out when the alleged shooter checked into the hotel? Why was Paddock wearing gloves if he was about to commit suicide? Have any other solitary mass shooters ever had girlfriends? To those questions, we'd add this. How could someone possibly have broken into, burgled Paddock's home in Reno in the middle of one of the biggest criminal investigations in the history of the state? Why was no one guarding the house? Are investigators actually that incompetent? Maybe they are. Either way, institutional credibility is dying here. When the authorities get it this wrong, people stop believing them. So nobody should be surprised when conspiracy theories rush in to fill the void of credible information from officials. Joining us now is former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Dan, I, I want to talk to you because I know that you're a rigorously logical thinker. What Thank you. could possibly account for the radical changes in something as simple as a timeline of the crime? As you just heard, they've changed again today. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to be very precise here, and I appreciate the compliment, because this case is very troubling. Tucker, you and I can both agree, and there's everything you said is absolutely true. There are a lot of open questions. Here's what I think is going on. I think there is an information gap between the hotel and law enforcement, and I think incentives here are not the same, and I don't mean that to call out anyone. I'm not calling out. Everybody right. wants to get to the bottom, but I get that. But obviously, there's legal liability on the, on the hotel's end, and the timeline has to be absolutely precise. Now, the law enforcement idea, this is just to get down the sequence of events, not necessarily the timeline by seconds. Remember, you know, if you, the, the difference between a five-minute response time and a seven-minute response time for the sequence of events may not be as impactful, but for a legal lawsuit, it may make a big difference. So from a law enforcement perspective, Tucker, that's, that's the only good guess, but I agree with you. This case makes almost no sense. Well, and one of the main reasons that people want to move to America in the first place is the belief that our, our law enforcement is competent, our legal system is on the level. We have real justice in this country, unlike most of the rest of the world. And when authorities behave in a way that suggests they have no idea what they're doing or they're not telling the whole truth or behaving in kind of a third world way really kind of shakes your faith, if you see what I mean. Yeah, and, and I think the problem here is with this 24-hour news cycle and social media, this is a different era. Listen, Tucker, let's be honest. 30 years ago, if you know Walter Cronkite or Tom Brokaw didn't mention it, it didn't right. happen. But now that's, it's a different world. It's, you have multiple news channels on 24 hours. People want to consume news. They're looking for a narrative and a story. And right now, this story makes no sense. I'll add another open uh, question to you. They did some kind of a brain autopsy and found no significant evidence of any brain trauma, which every time you look for an explanation to this case, radicalization, brain trauma, a history of sociopathic behavior, the book slams shut on you. It just 
doesn't make sense. And that's why law enforcement has to be super careful about getting this right, because people are going to fill in the narrative themselves. Right. And they haven't been super careful about getting it right, clearly, by their own by their own admission, they've changed the basic elements of the timeline. When was Jesus Campos shot? I mean, they changed that dramatically. So are there other, look, I, I never repeat conspiracy theories on TV. I think, it's, I think it's wrong and I think it's irresponsible. But I'm starting to think maybe there's an entirely separate explanation because the fact set that we have now does not, you know, any way you kind of stack it doesn't add up to something that I recognize as sensible. Yeah. No, it, 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 they don't. And, and, and the part that puzzles me the most is why the attacker killed himself with clearly the capacity. That, I mean, believe me, I'm glad the attack ended when it did. Yes. But it's still the question's not clear as to why he ended it, given this new revised timeline. And clearly he was prepared for a more elongated, extended attack. Again, thankfully it stopped. But it just doesn't make sense, and it makes you, it, 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 it's an open question that makes you wonder, and reasonable people can ask reasonable questions about that. It's not unfair to ask that. L last question, just process question, who's running this investigation? Is it the feds primarily, or is it still Clark County? Yeah, I would think that the, the bureau, the local bureau office run out of Las Vegas probably has jurisdiction but is seeking pretty significant input from the locals. But I just say that because the, the, in one of the press conferences, the Las Vegas sheriff clearly indicated that the FBI was the primary custodian of the evidence, which says to me that they're going to make it um, a federal jurisdiction case. Yeah. Dan Bongino, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me.